Now you've got Bono hanging out with the Pope in Obama. As a musician, to hang out with a politician, I think is disgusting. Yeah, that should be like David Cameron, Obama, I won't shake their hand for a million pounds. Here and here, my children speak of people's people. I'll be here for my baby, for my baby, I'll be near. So many things I need to tell you. I'm working on myself as a person, I'm trying to grow as a person. Before I was like, um, say for instance, I'd give up smoking weed. I was always smoking weed, right? Just from when I wake up till I go to bed. And um, people say that my music's dark or it's this, da, 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 da. And I thought my lifestyle was part of that. Now, if I grow as a person, my music will grow. It ain't gonna get less dark because I've stopped smoking weed or um, I don't put myself in certain situations. Like I was living in LA. I had a cleaner who's come to my house. She used to bring her kid, two of her kids. Boy, must have been about six, seven, and the girl about five. And me and my friend Caesar, we went to uh, Sunset Boulevard to get some food. And the kid's gone under my bed, and he's got out the gun, and he's fired it. And it was a, a Uzi. And lucky enough, it was on semi-automatic. If it had been on full automatic, he would have sprayed the building. So I got a call. I'm on Sunset Boulevard, and my neighbor, really good guy, really good guy. He lived with his brother. The bullet went through my bedroom, into it, he was eating breakfast and it missed his head by that much. So I get a call saying, you know, Tree, have you got a gun in your eyes? And I'm like, of course not. You know, I, of course not, why would I have a gun? So he goes, look, a bullet's come through your wall, I've had to call the police. We go down there, squat, SWAT team is there, you know, it's like, basically, long story short, I come up my house, I've got red dots all over me, I've got police at that end of a corridor, police at that end, and they're saying, come, put your hands on your head, go this way. These guys were telling me to come this way, and I'm, I just got on my knees, because I thought, are these dudes trying to shoot me? That kind of woke me up a little bit, and I just thought, I need to work on myself. God free, and Quay is my mum's family. Quay is an African name, but we've got um, Welsh, Godfrey, it's Welsh, it's Irish, Godfrey family, so that's who I kind of grew up with. And um, my dad's Jamaican, and that's his name, Falls, which is an unusual name. I, I, it must be a slave name. I, I've never heard Falls before. My family know me as Tricky. Most of my family know me as Tricky. So Tricky is me, but it's also like, I become an artist, I become successful before I worked on myself. Once I was in LA, right, and my friend, Caesar, was over the other side of the room, and I went and got two drinks. A security guard stopped me and said, Prince is dancing. I said, look, I got a drink here from me and my friend, my friend's there, so I've got to get from here to here. So I just walked across the dance floor. And Prince is doing his little boogie by himself, and it's like, I used to respect that guy. I used to think he was a great musician. Now, I threw every CD out of print I ever owned. First time I heard the specials, it's like, they're like me from a council flat. I was like, I can do that. So they give me opportunity. The specials not only were a great influence, they give an opportunity to someone like me who could say, because I can't, I haven't got that facetto voice like Prince and I can't play the guitar like him. So when I heard the specials, it was like, ah. Bust it! Is this the place to be? What am I doing here? Watching the girls go by, spending money. Oh. I was always been writing since I was a little kid. But when I heard the specials, it's like, ah, I can do this now. Because one of the things they were talking about, and Terry Orr is not a classically trained singer. He's a council flat boy who expressed himself. I grew up with white guys, but I had a dad who's Jamaican, who lived in the Jamaican area. And sometimes I'd be like, 
confused because you know I hear some white guys say something and then I hear some black guys say something and I always felt like I was in the middle and then first time I seen specials on TV black and white guys together I'm like ah yeah now nah, this is what it's supposed to be about I get it and they were talking about stuff I understood which songs I could write because Prince didn't make me or the Beatles like I don't know Yellow Submarine, I, where I come from, I don't know what they're talking about. Do you know what I mean? It's like the stuff the Beatles are talking about. I'm not really a Beatles fan, to be honest, but the stuff they're talking about, I just cannot relate. And they've done some great tracks. Now, a show is, is two ways. It's like, it's, a, uh, it's not a show, it's a party. You're supposed to be partying together, you know? You're supposed to be, it's, it's a two-way thing. So if I'm not getting anything back, and I'm not saying you have to be jumping above down cheering, but you can feel emotion. Every lie, and every crime, every time, and every slight, every lie, and every, and every. Mickey Blanco was like, he was supporting me in Germany, and it was like, wow, this guy is just. And to do a support is difficult, right? To do the be the support act, because people are waiting for the main act. He was almost like a fight with the audience and then he turned the music off and he just done an a cappella for 15 minutes. Yeah, you know, he might be gay, he might be wearing a mini skirt and eye holes, but there's something about this dude. Toe, my pussy's so tight, nigga left it in a stoke clothes. Black Sailor, Black Sailor Moon, Black Sailor Moon, Black Sailor Moon, Black Sailor Moon, John Joan of Arc, now give me my veneration. Well, I'ma keep this one short and sweet like my outfits. I'm in the mirror, gloss and lips, adjusting how this crown fits. It might sound arrogant, it might sound bold, but everything I touch turns to motherfucking gold. I wouldn't work with Damon Albarn again. We were walking through Leeds, and we were in this fu fucked up area. And I looked around and I said, look at this, these kids got nothing. And he said to me, they got us. And I just thought, you know, when these kids are going in and out of jail, they ain't got no, you know what I mean, they ain't got no money. How are we, especially you, so maybe you could say that about me, right? But I wouldn't have the arrogance to say, all right, kids from Norwest and Leeds and the ghetto, they got nothing, they're out hustling, but they got me. I wouldn't be that arrogant. And then we were going down uh, uh, a subway, right? And there was these four guys walking through the subway, four or five guys pissed up. And uh, the vibe was a bit, it could have got naughty, you know? And he goes, no, let's not walk here, let's go across the road. Now there's cars going 100 miles per hour, right? Like a big main road, like cars, woof, woof. And I said, listen, you mad? These cars are going like 100 miles per hour here. You know, I thought you were a man of the people but you don't want to walk through subway. And we walked through the subway and these guys were super cool. They did nothing, there was no problem, not even any aggression. They didn't even look at us. They didn't even recognize me, they didn't recognize him. I, mean, I don't think they cared. Is it getting better? I changed my face. And if you think I'm fake, I'll wait around. I never would with Martin again if I was given a million pounds. It's like, She's working with Massive Attack. It's like, to me, it's like, look, we've all got our history. But like, why would you want to work with the mother of my kid? Like, you know, I know she's talented. She's very incredibly talented. But I don't believe, because I know those guys, I don't believe that's just for Martina. I don't really give a fuck about Massive Attack. I'll do business with them. A few weeks ago, this girl said to me, I was in this uh, little hip hop club, but I was upstairs and a girl said, ah, do I know you from somewhere? What do you do? I said, I'm a stand up comedian. She goes, really? Then I stood up and went to the bathroom. And I said, yeah. And it's just like, I can't be bothered with it. You know what I mean? If you don't know who I am, it doesn't matter. What I do, does it really matter? How does that matter to you? People need to live their own lives. I want to be a better person. I don't, I don't really care about my music. If I become a better person, I know my music will grow. If I grow as a person, your music's bound to grow. I thought basically all I had to do is keep living my lifestyle and going in the studio. I don't think life works like that. I think um, people were work in process. So I'm a work in process, I'm growing. Order. Order. I got me. 